Okay. It's Happy Hour again from Uptown New Orleans. Hello, I'm Grant Morris. Happy Hour is part of the family of shows on the podcast network. It's neworleans.com. When you walk into a bar in New Orleans and you pull up a bar stool, you never know who's going to be sitting on either side of you. What you do know is no matter what they look like, what they're wearing, whether they just got out of a limo or just got out of jail, they're going to be happy to talk to you. Because that's New Orleans and this is Happy Hour, a cocktail-fueled 60 minutes of random conversation with folks who have nothing in common. Other than we're all New Orleanians in a bar today, we're at the fabulous Wayfair on Ferret Street, which is a couple of blocks down from Napoleon Avenue. <laughs> right across from the European Wax Center, and they have a four-hour happy hour here every single day from 3 to 7 o'clock in the evening when uh, drinks are half price and bar food is half price as well. If you can't be bothered waiting for that, stick around for the next hour because we have happy hour right here. This afternoon, I have a bunch of whole fabulous guests. This is the very last show of 2018. Andrew mm -hmm. Duhon, how are you feeling? I feel, yeah, I feel great. I, let's go with fair. Fair? Yeah. What, what's the mitigating factor? What's wrong? Physical heartburn? or... I think it's, yeah, it's heartburn. Probably heartburn. Heartburn. What <laughs> yeah. did you have for lunch? Uh, nothing. You know what it is? No food. I made some salsa verde, and I think I put too much jalapeno in there, so I think ah, I'm just still feeling that. That'll do it to you. Yeah. 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 That's bad news. Uh -huh. Well, hopefully you can take something for that. What about some uh, club soda and bitters from the bar here? It's what are you drinking? Half price. This is a Buffalo Trace and ginger beer. Oh, that'll actually. fix it, actually. Yeah, it's got fine. ginger in it as well. Yep. Hey, so, so Brent Arsament is here as well. Brent has I two am. teas. Two. Why yeah. do you have two teas in Brent? You know, that's a... That's a uh, it's a good question. Um, I already started it, off with it, a good question. It, it, every, it's, it, it's a great question. Um, Thank you. Because it really, uh, it really doesn't matter. Brent, one tea. Brent, well, two what, teas. What made the parents put two teas? Is it yeah, a family yeah, thing? No, or? no just, just special. Just think it just special. <laughs> just makes it different. Just, yeah. Okay. Just, you know, Did yes. you ever ask them why would you put two teas in my name? Out? Um, no. I have not. Do we have but, their phone? Are they so, still uh, with us, your parents? Yeah, are they no, still they're, both alive? they're here. I don't know if they're watching right now. Well, but, can uh, we find out? Call them up. Yeah, why, uh, how, well, why is there two T's? Yeah, I in, mean, in, I can't believe that name. you haven't asked your parents. And how old are you, 40, say? Uh, 45. 45? I just turned Jeez, 45. you look great. Thank you. Wow, Thank you, how did you do that? And you're a, dr you're a drummer. I am a which drummer. Which is, yeah. I guess, maybe it's the exercise. It could be. Brent, you've been a drummer for some incredible people, including Fiona Apple. Yes. And a whole, and you were in live. I did for a very short short period of time. I did a uh, a tour. A tour with live. Mm -hmm. So you're, yeah, you're yeah. the real deal. Well, I, I don't know if real deal is the. Oh well, I can, <laughs> I can take that back if you like. <laughs> no, no, I appreciate that. Yeah, no, I. Um, uh, it, well, funny enough, uh, Dennis Rodman, uh, the basketball player, is actually one of, one I think of my best a, friends. Huh. And, uh, is he really? He, yeah, he's actually okay. the one that got me the gig. Do you know Kim Jong Un? <laughs> I do not. Because uh, Dennis okay. Rodman does. We're going to get does. on to Dennis Rodman in just a minute. Okay. Tom McDermott was also a musician. Do you know Tom, by the way? I, I've heard of Tom's name many times in many circles, but I've never, oh. I've never Tom, met welcome Tom. to Happy Hour. Well, thank you for having me. Tom is one of the preeminent piano players. Like, how can you not know who he is? He? I am asking myself it, the same question. First of all, you don't know why there's two T's in your own name, <laughs> and now you don't know Tom McDermott. Strangely, he also has two T's in McDermott, correct? That is true, and there's nothing I can do about it. <laughs> <laughs> so that's a traditional spelling of McDermott, though. It is two T's, but all what I want to know is, what is the difference between eminent and preeminent? I mean, is it uh, your I don't know. <laughs> I've never wondered. I've never what is the difference? That. I don't know. I think I'm, they mean different things. I don't know if eminent is a word. Em eminent. <laughs> eminent is a word, <laughs> meaning something that's oh, going to happen. Right. That's right. But eminent, I think, is not a word. A preeminent means fabulous, <laughs> doesn't huh. it? I do God, now, now I'm, uh, you got me thinking. Now well, this is why like before the happening, so it's cool. <laughs> this is why we have C Rock here. Will tell us if eminent is a word. Katie Sakura is here. Hi, Katie. How Hi. are you doing? Just one T. In my one name. Katie in the middle of Katie. <laughs> yeah. Well, Sakura is an interesting name. S I K O R A. Where is that from? It's Polish. Um, there was a Z in there at some point. That oh, like after the S, I suppose. The S Z I. I believe so. Yeah. So it was like, used to be like Sikora or something. That sounds cool. Not that, I don't have the greatest Polish accent. But does anyone in your family still speak Polish? My dad does, and then all the people that live in Poland. Well, they all speak Polish. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Is your dad himself from Poland? No, both my parents were born in England. Um, because really? Because both sets of parents ended up there after the war. 
wow. had both my mom and dad, and then separately, both families ended up in Chicago. And then well, there's a big Polish down, community there's in a Chicago. Huge Polish community. Um, I'm not sure what it's like today with you know transplants everywhere, um, but there used to be a time where Chicago was the you know the next largest population of Polish people outside of the country. Outside of Warsaw. Yeah, exactly. Wow, but well, that's that may still be actually. That's another I, again, thing. Again, it's possible. C-Rock. I just didn't want a quota. C-Rock, <laughs> stat C-Rock that I don't can have. tell us. Now you're a photographer. Mm-hmm. And when did you move to New Orleans? Almost five years ago. It'll be five years in May. Did you move here to take photos, or did you move here for some other reason to get away from the cold? Uh, it was mostly impulse. It was kind of your quintessential New Orleans story of came down to visit a friend and then about a month and a half later moved all my stuff down and, <laughs> yeah um so no not for photos not for anything really just for a little bit of an adventure but it stuck so um, you're here how's I'm it here. working out well who were you taking photos of mostly a lot Pre- of preeminently people, I should say. but a lot of musicians um you know like most artists anywhere um there's a lot of different things that I do day to day to, you know, pay the bills. But uh, music photography, I'd say, is, is the one that I feel the most feelings for. Who's paying you for that? <laughs> <laughs> it's an excellent, excellent question. Sometimes you got to get creative with how, you, how to get paid. But um, no, you know, if you, like myself, you know, just grind and work at your brand, you know, you can, you can eke it out. And yeah. Like I said, just getting creative with other right. methods of money. Your other thing that you're doing is super cool. I think it's, what is it called? The Sexism Project? project. Or it's yeah. called The Sexism Project. Yeah, and it got its name because we just kept, we didn't know what to call it. We just kept calling it The Sexism Project. So well, anything with sex that. in it is going <laughs> to sell. Have you found that to be true? Um, well, we're not really trying to sell anything, so <laughs> I'm sure maybe, but uh, that's not really the goal. It's, it's mostly a, a platform for women, um, women with an X in this context, uh, can come and tell their stories about their personal experiences and their personal viewpoints on the matter of sexism. And um, I think that's been really cool to both listen to and be a part of because it's it's a topic that everybody has different kinds of feelings about um and so it's been really it's fascinating to provide that platform it's a fascinating uh website actually did you guys notice that or was it just i heard something what what is going on there it's a fascinating website do you ask these are you the interviewer i am and are you recording these interviews yes and what are you doing with the recordings? I listen to them and transcribe them, which is a You're the, painful You sit there process. transcribing every... Why don't you... <laughs> because they, I must say, you are a talented interviewer. You Thank might you. like to take over this whole show, actually. <laughs> I'll leave that to you. I'll leave that Would to you. you. I'll come on uh, and visit. But. Uh, those interviews are really great. Thank I you. mean, they're really first-class interviews. They really ask great questions of people, of all these women, all these different women from different walks of life. Mm-hmm. And all these different stories, and the questions you ask them are really searching and interesting. Thank you. Not Thank just, you very much. yeah. But I was thinking, would it be great to hear those interviews? It would. The reason I don't, we don't publish the uh, audio interview up to this point, is because in many of them there is classified information that is classified off the record for the how it's presented to the public. Can't um, you edit that out though? Yes, um, but. We haven't gotten that far yet. You know, we're a small team. It's a scrappy organization. And, so you know, we're, we're, we're working our way toward higher levels but, of But the classified product. information is, is offered at the... No, no. It's, it's information that level. the subject might <laughs> say in the course of their interview, but not want to right. see. put I out see. in the public. It's a, lot, it. of, it's yeah, a lot of hard stories that mm-hmm. are being told. Yeah. That's really yeah. they're really great interviews, but you could give them a tra- like a ver- uh, you know a what's the co- like a copy an audio copy of it and say what what can't we say and then take it up. Yeah, I'll usually go through transcribe it and then send them the full transcription and let them e- interview. I'm mean, sorry, ar- edit the audio. I'm and sorry, interview. They, so they they'll look at the they'll <laughs> edit look at the your transcription and then they can take out the text that they. And don't how often there. do people do that? A handful of times, you know, most people. Uh, if they do end up seeing something they dislike or don't want, decide they later don't want in their interview out, you know, in the internet sphere, uh, they just, you know, text right. me and then I take it out. That's the beauty of so the, the first, internet these days. The first ones I saw were were basically musicians, I think, women musicians. Mm-hmm. And then the second round of people seemed to be people in the sex industry. Yeah, the sex trade. Strippers and hookers and so on. Mm-hmm. Which I thought was a strange question to ask someone, have you ever encountered sexism as a hooker? Well, I mean, in every, in every single inter- uh, industry that we are going to cover, 
um, there is going to be sexism because it's everywhere. Yeah, but what um, made you go from musicians to people in the sex working industry? It was actually Next. one of the subjects. Um, we finit we closed out the first installment of the project, which, like you mentioned, uh, highlighted females and female presenting individuals in the music community here in New Orleans. And a friend of mine that uh, we both freelance for Anti Gravity. Right. Uh, our local a newspaper. Yeah. She came up to me and told me about all the local and national legislation that is being put out then and still against sex workers and strippers um, and asked if I would consider taking that on as our next installment. Mm. And uh, we had already talked about, we as a team had already talked about what our next installment would be, but it was it was too important, it was too great of a conversation not to have with people. And what was the, it's a legislative issue that they're trying to stop the... So the locally, a lot of the attacks are against the strip clubs in the French Quarter. Um, they just recently passed uh, legislation that says if you are under the age of 21, you can't work in a strip club, which you know has major civil rights consequences. And earlier this year, they... There's a lot of proposals going on to limit the amount of strip clubs in certain areas, much like the Frenchman issue well, on right. Frenchman, the music club issue on Frenchman. And where are we with that whole discussion now? It's an uphill battle. Um, but has the legislature still, is it still a possibility that that will so happen? So the, the, legisla the legislation that was proposed to limit the amount of clubs, I believe that that is at the moment tabled that was shut down in the spring, um, or that version of it, but they very recently passed through the motion that said that anyone under 21 can't work. And I guess that their reason for doing that is that they're trying to protect young women from <laughs> being exploited. Is there anything terribly wrong with that there, theory? What, what is the ulterior motive here? The, um, there is a lack of discussion with the women and the people that actually work in the industry um, and in conjunction with that proposed legislation. So a lot of it sounds on the outside like it, it, it would be a helpful thing. And, you know, the, hu the, the, the term human trafficking gets thrown right. around a lot, and that is obviously a word that triggers most sane people <laughs> into a negative place, rightfully so, but the presentation of what the people in that industry need versus what... Um, to like to the outside, well, what, what is, the, the what government is, is telling us isn't actual doesn't line uh, yeah. up with the actual. But why needs does anybody in Baton Rouge care? Why are they suddenly making this an issue? Um, there's a whole. Well, it's not suddenly. There's been a lot of protests.